Um, you've got a different hat on today. I have. Uh, yes, I've been um, involved this morning with the press conference uh, launching uh, with Best uh, for Britain. Uh, org. And this basically is the first major uh, MRP polling. So it's like a snapshot today where they are saying if there was an election now with the new boundaries for constituencies, right. which will take place, I believe, next month, what would happen? And uh, the, the, this form of MRP, I should hasten to add, is, is, is very sophisticated. So rather than saying, oh, there are 2000 people and it's demographically about right and then multiplying it out through the country. They take people like, oh, James O'Brien, mm. okay, a typical James O'Brien, and they form a profile for a typical James O'Brien. Dare I describe him? No. Yeah. And then they would take one for someone like me in her 60s, a uh, single parent, owns her own house, yes. that kind of thing. Got then it. they would take one for a plumber or a, a chippy or whatever and say, yeah has his own business or her own business, drives a van, does his own. And they have these profiles for, for you know, many thousands of not typical people. but So they just categorise yes. as much as they can. And then they take polls for what those people would um, vote at any particular time. And then they map that onto a constituency using the census and all sorts of other data. So okay. it becomes very accurate. Oh, oh, oh do you I see. see what yes, I, mean? I do. So you get a, a, a clearer constituency specific picture exactly of what that. is likely so to happen based accurate. on demographics. Yes. Do you know what it stands for? What, MRP? Yeah. Well, it's got a lot of syllables it's in it. It's a big one. It's like your countdown days, this. It's multi level regression and post stratification. I just looked it up. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic, well, very clever isn't it? being able to read it out, frankly, Mr. James <laughs> O'Brien. Um, but so, so that is the kind of stati statistical analysis behind it. So there was a wonderful Naomi from Best for Britain, mm. uh, um, Professor John Curtis, who we see obviously um, the mainly Don. on the BBC, but on lots of channels, the Don. Uh, talking about particularly on election night, and a wonderful guy called Luke Trill whose company does a lot of focus groups. I don't know if you're familiar with him. I mm, met yes, him I am. I, I, well, I know his work. Uh, and, and, it's, and he describes the qualitative stuff. So what are groups of people thinking about? And I've got some great descriptions. I've took lots of notes yeah, go on. of what are they thinking about Sunak, Starmer, and so on, and why are they are voting this way? But fundamentally, the results that would come in if there were, obviously there isn't a general election, very sadly, um, and if it was done today, the best version of this would give Labour a 140 seat majority Gosh. with 470 seats. I hasten to add this is for England, Scotland, Wales, not Northern Ireland. And the Conservatives would win 129 seats, still far too many, in my opinion. Um, but when you look at, then they can take out reform. If Reform UK stood back in Conservative marginals, that changes because there's a big assumption assumption that if you're going to vote reform you would and they weren't there you would then vote conservative well that's the party that farage was leading last time uh, round, isn't it uh, so they did withdraw from exactly yeah. so if they stood back um that shows in this polling in this um statistical polling that labor could drop to around 400 seats okay and the conservatives would go up to about 200 seats so the biggest block uh, was uh, of voters was um, Labour at 35%, Conservative 23%. I know, who are these people? No. Um, and the don't knows are the third biggest block at 12%. OK. So if you then assumed that a lot of those, because a lot of the don't knows were Conservative voters, if you assume they go back, then you start to get into tricky territory when you combine that with um, reform standing down as well. So those two things, the undecided all go to Tory mm. and reform stand down, you could then be in a hung parliament scenario, still with Labour having um, 
uh, more seats than the Conservatives, but it would be a hung Parliament um, territory. So that was fundamentally uh, what they were talking about. But it was a sort of, what are people thinking? This is what Luke was... I'll just, um, I'll just, I'll just mention, this is the modelling, that the MRP modelling was the one that got 2017 bang on, including the shocks in places like Kensington and Canterbury, which I didn't understand at the time. But now you've explained yes. the constituency-specific nature of the... Of yes. the work. That's how they could know in 2017 uh, that Kensington was going to surprise everybody. Absolutely. And it. in 2019, they got it within one seat. It's incredible, isn't it? So it is incredible. So it is, a, as far as analysis can go and projection can go, it's very, very important. And uh, Naomi from Best for Britain said in 2019, she said to the Liberals, don't, don't go with this. Just don't go and say, let's have another election because this is what's going to happen. And they ignored it. Anyway, uh. we, we know what happened after that. So it's very interesting. They were talking about, by Luke from More in Common was talking about the focus groups. And um, fundamentally, they say that the Labour support is large, but it is falling right. in these marginal constituencies. Um, from about six months ago. It's large, but it's soft. Yes. And what they mean by that is that it, you know, these aren't people who are saying, I'm going to vote Labour, I'm definitely going to vote Labour. They're, going to say, they're saying, I'll probably vote Labour, but actually I want s to see something more. Um, he found that, and you'll know this on a daily basis, a lot of people have utter exhaustion. Yeah. With politics, absolute <clears throat> exhaustion. The, the phrases that keep coming up are Britain has stopped working, broken Britain, it's chaos, shambles. And everybody this time around, Luke was saying, ha have a, has a personal story. Right. So in terms of the issues that matter, it's not stop the boat, stop the boat, stop no. the boat, stop the boat. 75, you know, three quarters of people, it's cost of living. So it's when you're talking about energy bills, when you're talking about inflation, and inflation is different for everyone, depending on you know what most of your money goes out uh, to, on spending. Then it was NHS. Everybody, in terms of um, support for the strikes, everybody more or less supported the nurses, right. not necessarily train drivers sure. uh, and so on. That's split. And immigration, concerns about that, it was only 28%. Still high, but not considerably what's, lower what, than what, in previous uh, right years. What the media would yes, have you course. believe by any stretch. This is fascinating stuff. Um, Partygate was a big issue. So this is where it's a personal story. Can't get a GP appointment. Everybody knows that. If you say ambulance waiting times, mm. we're not all of us have to call an ambulance. Of course. Obviously, critically important. But not, not day to day that. experience. But it's not, you know, we all generally have to ring up the GP at some mm. point or other in, in a year. It was cost of living, people saying things like, we can't go on um, days out with the kids anymore. We can't do those things, as well as, you know, all of the others who are very, very, very worried um, about... It's not interesting, because none of this is reflected in most political journalism at the moment. Is well, it, it isn't. Not, not, it the, isn't. I did have a go the, about that, Did you? I'm not yes, surprised, because you're right. The so, stop the boat stuff and some of the other really rhetoric, isn't. this is, just doesn't speak to people who can't get a GP appointment or who were worried about not being able to take the kids out for the day during the holidays. Absolutely. So when they came to Sunak... Yes. Um, this, this is the way he's described. He is less unpopular than the Conservative Party. <laughs> I like that. No, that's I lovely, think, isn't it? Talk about I, damning I with faint praise. When, when he was next on his lectern, you know, when he has his little things, his little stickers so on the front, he's like, I am less lot. unpopular <laughs> than the rest so of so my so party. Because it's relative. So he is unpopular, but yes. the party itself is even more unpopular than he is. As a, which yes. is, I mean, which is a win for him. It, you know, yes. it, it, it just is. But the popularity of the Conservative Party is down from 55 to 23%. So, you know, from um, yeah. going back to uh, 2019. Gosh. Gosh. So a lot of things that people are saying um, are, well, he's not really strong enough. Why can't he stand up to Johnson? A lot mm. of people call him Little Rishi. Oh, really? Little Rishi can't stand up to people. They sticks. hate the non-dom. Do they? That Obviously with his wife. Yes, uh, of course. Uh, choosing... Um, non-DOM tax status to avoid paying £20 million. Don't start me on that one, £20 million pounds to HMRC, which he still mm. hasn't offered to pay back. Mm. Anyway, uh, not illegal. No, absolutely not illegal. And not bankrupt. him, it's his, you know, it, it is his wife. 
course. But people have... That's landed. A so a lot of this stuff that you're talking about, yeah. I keep reading and hearing Conservative MPs telling me that people don't care. With the, with the country's moved on from Partygate. No, no one cares about his wife's no, financial Partygate affairs. Is That's a That's really one. interesting, isn't Absolutely it? Absolutely a big one. So this is all despite right-wing media coverage. It's, I mean, yes. it's actually despite of it, not alongside it or because of it, but this is despite no, this being is constantly spite. told. The because world. we all know it. You know, when I always have this phrase, you know what you know. And you do, and you know when you're being lied to. Mm. And the vast majority, look at the local election results. You know, the vast majority of people know that there's something not right. They know they're being lied to, no matter whether they read the Daily Mail or not. Yeah. But the Conservative base, he said, was split. So you have effectively the Red Wall, which they describe as loyal nationals. Right. Um, and and with the Red Wall, they struggle um, with Sunak, they find it difficult to deal with his wealth. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, the swimming pool story was significant. Uh, and they would then, you know, they would be was like... It really? They would, well, sorry? That swimming pool story was... Yeah, I, yes, I, yes. I'm really interested in the stuff that's getting traction. Absolutely. It's fascinating, it, isn't yes, it? Yes, it really is. Because uh, it goes against what I think people in London, and yes, it's not against right. London, no, but I people in right. London think they look internally into Westminster. Mm. I don't live in London. I choose not to live in London. I you know, grew up North Wales, lived in Leeds for many years, live in Bristol now. I have lived in London. But it, it's very different out there. You know, it, it's a different world. Yes. So then they also have the blue wall, right. you know, um, which uh, he described as more camera night. Yeah types you know yeah. they didn't like boris johnson but they quite like rishi sunak because right. he's they're quite liberal they, so they quite like him um but fundamentally the message is labor have got to get their act together and also if sunak's rating falls then the tory party fall with him yes so they really do um need him and then you can come on to starmer um and People go, oh, they're judging him against Tony Blair. Uh, absolutely not. They're right. judging him against Jeremy Corbyn. Ah, that's a win for him. That's a win, exactly. But they, his description was, he's a bit meh. Yeah, I knew you were going to say that word. Yeah. But partly from the shape of your mouth, as you prepared <laughs> to say it. Because <laughs> it is it's quite, but it, yeah. He's a bit like... So he's, as they're saying, your, my mum would say, neither now nor summit. Yeah, so, they, so they're not like against him. Mm. Um, they said he's competent. But, and this is the critical thing, but does he have the answers? Mm. So bearing in mind, you know, the, the phrases Captain Hindsight and so on have stuck. They have. Yeah, absolutely. The whole Jimmy Savile stuff, well, you know, I'm not saying he did, but they, the, the question saying, well, didn't he let, you know, this sort this of is why Johnson, This is why Johnson did interest, it. I mean, you know, it's completely dishonest. Didn't he let dishonest. him off, didn't right. he, you know, and all of okay. that. Um, That's so, interesting. And they're cynical that, that any of the stuff that the Conservatives are saying... They're very cynical that any of it's going to work. Um, even those who vote Tory don't believe that what they're telling us, you know, half, right. I can't remember what the five are now, half inflation. Bring so down the waiting stop list. Stop the boats. Stop the boats. Uh, there's a couple of others. <laughs> I can't remember. That, this is amazing stuff. Stop the boats. Um, where can people find out more about it? So uh, if you go on to uh, Best for Britain, yeah. all spelt out, I'm just going to have to get the website up. Hold on here. Best for Britain dot org O R G and then it'll be on there. It? I mean, it's amazing. I know that finally just for my yeah. own it was Luke Trill was asked about what people thought about Suella Braverman. Did you take any oh, notes yes, about yes, that? Yes, Let's just do that, that in conclusion. <laughs> she would have she would effectively be the longest suicide note in history. That for the was, Tory uh, party. For the Tory party oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, so it's uh, open season in the Conservative Party at the moment. It's so fascinating that because the membership like her, it's like trust all over again. Yeah. The, the, the membership like her, but the country absolutely doesn't. No. But of course, if there isn't, you know, you get to be Prime Minister if yes. the membership like you, unless there's yes. a, a general election. This is amazing stuff. And, and one of the things, if we've time, that, that I was there to We haven't about really, but seeing as it's you. Tactical voting. Right. So um, the Stop the Tories dot vote, which I was supporting for yes. the local elections. We had half a million people visit that website. Yeah, it's incredible. Within numbers. the last four days before the local elections. And I honestly believe that tactical voting will be. Could make a, a massive difference. Important. Well, those 12% of undecided. 
sided as well. If yeah. you combine the two, then Massive. it's all it's all to play for. Carol Fulman, what a pleasure. Lots of people delighting in this uh this this career. What what is it? A co- career <laughs> augmentation. I don't know what it is. No, it's really. about this new new, know, new it's avenue. Just, this it's new just an avenue. angry old bird from <laughs> North Wales, basically, getting <laughs> very cross about nonsense. how we are. <laughs> and, and and as you say, the the, the, the detail of the polling is absolutely yes. staggering. And, yes, and it is. Engrossing. We'll see you soon. Yeah, you will. Thank you so much. If you want more of Carol Vorderman and uh, <laughs> and with occasional interruptions from me, I'd refer you to our recent full disclosure interview, which um uh, yes. has been one of the most popular of the year.